Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas. In our ongoing study in Paul and the Faithfulness of God by N.T. Wright. We're going to take a look at pages 1195 to 1220. We're going to look at uh, a very unique aspect of Paul's ministry, his ministry to the remnant of Israel. The remnant of Israel. We always recall Paul as the apostle to the Gentiles, but he was also the apostle to the remnant of Israel that would be saved a remnant that would be saved out of the Israel of the flesh. There would be a remnant of the Israel of promise that would be saved. So let's begin by taking a look at uh, block one. We're going to take a look at uh, Israel being cast away and then being accepted back in. We begin with uh, Romans 11:15, And we've got uh, the concept of uh, Epibole, the fall of Israel into temporary blindness opened up salvation to the Gentiles. The uh, inclusive covenant of Jews and Gentiles together was God's original plan always, says Paul. And the post-Messianic situation was not what Israel had anticipated. It was a very unexpected turn of event with a Messiah who was actually cursed and died on a cross. So Paul has to rework Israel's eschatology through the lens of Jesus Christ the Messiah. Israel had failed in her vocation to be a guide to the blind, to be a light to the nations. Election had to be reworked for Paul. And uh, according to Romans 11, 16 and 17, some of Israel would be broken off and Gentiles would be grafted in. Paul uses the metaphor of the olive tree for Israel throughout these pages. Uh, throughout his letter to the Romans especially. But there would be some of Israel broken off. The unbelieving Israel of the flesh would be broken off of the covenant, but Gentiles would be grafted in. The next concept we get is in a note to the Katalage in Romans 11.15. Paul concludes that Christ is Lord over all nations, Jew and Gentile together. For Paul, a remnant of Israel shall be saved. Christ has committed unto all the word of reconciliation. Peace has been made for all by the blood of the cross. So a, par a portion of Israel falls away into temporary blindness toward the Messianic word. But this opens up a path to the Gentiles and Gentile ministry for Paul, but Paul also knows that a remnant of Israel shall be saved. Those who call on the Messiah shall be reconciled and shall be redeemed by the blood of the cross. A remnant can be saved. Therefore, we get to note three, the third concept of a proslemsis, also in Romans 11.15. All this is in Romans 11.15. Israel's being cast away temporarily is a type of suffering and cross-bearing, kind of a vicarious suffering. Therefore, Israel can also share in Christ's resurrection with the remnant being accepted back in. That's the proslemsis mean to be accepted back in. Because Christ is Israel's representative, says Paul, the saved remnant will be made dead to sin and alive unto God because they will be in the Messiah. Therefore, if you look at note four, therefore, the triad emerges of epibole, katalage, and pro proslemsis. You've got epibole, a portion of Israel will be broken off the olive tree and cast away temporarily so that Gentiles can be grafted in. And then Israel comes under the awareness and the conviction of the uh, katalage redemption and salvation that's available universally to Jews and Gentiles and all nations and some of Israel will turn to Christ and will be grafted back in as a remnant as a Israel of the spirit and Israel of the promise. They will be able to uh, share in the reconciliation in Christ. So yes, some have been blinded, but some will turn to Christ. And that's why we have a, a beautiful teaching in block two where Paul says that uh, he actually has a magnified ministry 
Paul was under the conviction that he had a magnified apostolic ministry because he was the apostle to the Gentiles, but he was also an apostle to the remnant of Israel that would turn to Christ. So he had a double mission. He always went to the synagogue in every Gentile nation that he entered. He always went to the synagogue and did preach to the Jews first because Paul was very much concerned about his fellow Jews in the flesh, and he knew, he knew and he wanted some of those to turn to Jesus Christ and the promise in Christ to become that saved remnant. So Paul had a twofold ministry. The remnant of Israel will be saved through their jealousy, is the way it is worded. This is the theme adopted by Paul. So his ministry was twofold. It was to the Gentiles and to the Jewish remnant because some Jews would turn out of jealousy. Remember, in many of the synagogues, they would get jealous and upset over the fact that these Gentiles were being offered grace and salvation without becoming Jews first. And Paul says that jealousy is going to help to spurn on the remnant to turn to Christ. So it is a pathway through the positing of the sign of the Gentiles to create jealousy. And for Paul, that's fine because if it does urge some to turn to Christ, it's uh, well worth it. Now in note two, we talk about that magnified ministry. And Paul said he had a magnified office, a ministry that was rendered fully in the service of the gospel of Jesus Christ to the remote places where the Messiah has never been known, never been acknowledged. He would go to the remote areas of the known world and he would minister to those who had not heard that Jesus is the Messiah, that Jesus had been raised from the dead. He would render fully the service of the gospel. And he did have a signifying ministry. He designated the Gentiles as a sign under the Jewish remnant to, to urge them through jealousy to turn to Christ. He also posited the dialectical signs of new mind and Sark's flesh that are in a spiritual war against each other within every believer. So we have a triad here also. Number one, Paul had a twofold ministry to the Gentiles and to the Jewish remnant, we learn here. Second, he had a magnified ministry to proclaim the gospel unto places that had never known of the Messiah. And then three, Paul had a signifying ministry where he posited the sign of the Gentiles under the Jewish remnant to urge the Jews to turn to Christ. He also posited the signs of the new mind. He always taught, put on the new mind and battle against the Sark's flesh. So he had a signifying ministry as well. He had his own, um, and we know from past lessons, Paul created the, the birth of theological language for the Christian faith. Not in what we understand it to be today, but he, was a, he laid the foundation stones for Christian theology. Not that he had a real organized systematic theology, but Paul did lay the foundational work for theology. He was the first theologian, kind of a proto-theology is developed by Paul, and he, he was the one who really did develop very significant concepts as the lexical content for that new theology that would emerge. So Paul always had a ministry of translation or a ministry of signification. He had to translate Jewish ideas in a Gentile context. He had to translate Jewish, Jewish eschatology into a new Jewish expectation in order to reach the remnant of Israel. So he was always translating signs, translating concepts, translating ideas. His ministry was all about language and translation and trying to find the right theological lexical content and framework to convey the gospel to a variety of audiences. So that takes us on to block three. We're going to take a look at uh, Life from out of spiritual death. Again, Romans 11:15. I mean, Professor Wright spent uh, 20 pages talking about one verse, talking about Romans 11:15. That is Paul's statement about Israel being temporarily cast away, so that Gentiles could be grafted in, and so that 
the remnant of Israel because I'll also be grafted back in and also participate in the Messiah and the reconciliation in the Messiah. Romans 11.15 is extremely powerful verse and critically important for Paul. So in block three, Israel as a remnant of the faithful is accepted back into the new covenant. The remnant that is in the Messiah will share in Christ's promise and his purpose and in his resurrection. Israel stumbled in their vocation, but, but Paul says, but they did not fall away completely. They did stumble at a Messiah who was crucified, but they, some did not fall away completely. Some are redeemable. And then note two, we have the, uh, the Kaioma action of righteousness performed by Christ, who is the representative of Israel and of all, all sinful humanity. Through Christ, the Kaioma action, justification reaches the remnant of Israel. Sin was gathered together and consolidated into a whole so that it could be conquered completely in Christ and in his cross. Remember, Paul taught that sin was gathered into a holistic whole so that the entirety of sin could be nailed to the cross of Christ and defeated once and for all. So Paul taught that sin had to become a universality. You have to understand that all humanity is sinful before you recognize that there's a need for reconciliation. So Paul taught that there was this... Uh, accentuation and consolidation of all sinfulness into an aggregate whole, a consolidated whole, so that through the gospel we can learn that sin was conquered and defeated and nailed to the cross. The Adamic nature was nailed to the cross, says Paul. So critically important, but Israel stumbled at this uh, revelation in Christ, but they not all fell away completely. And if you look at the note three, the Gentiles have received mercy as a result of Israel's disobedience. Paul even says that it's Israel's disobedience that opens the door for the Gentiles. It was always an intention by God to bring together all nations from the very beginning. But this disobedience and this saving of the remnant was the way, says Paul, that the Israel could be narrowed down to a faithful remnant. So this temporary blindness was all serving the true intentionality of God's plan of salvation, says Paul. Because Israel of the flesh needed to be narrowed down into a remnant of promise. The Israel of the flesh needed to be narrowed down to a true remnant of promise who would turn to being in the Messiah and receive reconciliation. So this narrowing down is part of the plan, according to Paul's understanding. And so we have the elect uh, remnant, the uh, Lima Kata Eklogan, in note 4, that is in Romans 11:15. Even as disobedient, Christ died for the remnant, and the remnant is saved from wrath through the blood of the cross. That's in Romans 5, 8, and 9. The remnant of Israel will be saved from wrath through the blood of the cross, just as any who turn to Christ will be saved from wrath through the blood of the cross. A remnant shall be saved, says Paul. His ministry is to the Gentiles, yes, but he always went to the synagogue. He believed, he was convicted that Jesus Christ wanted to draw a remnant of Israel into himself also, and Paul ministered to that hope of a redeemed remnant of Israel that would turn to Christ. But with all of uh, Paul's teachings and in the uh, masterful work by Professor Wright, we always look at the concrete aspects of the lesson also. We've got two columns to take a look at on the right side of the chart. We're going to start with uh, column one, the mystery of the law of faith. And this is all about the olive tree that uh, is the metaphor that Paul used. We go to Romans 11:16 through 24. The olive tree is the Israel of promise. 
The first fruits of the remnant of Israel are those who are in the Messiah. The lump and the broken off branches, those are the unbelieving members of Israel. The root is the patriarchs of the covenant. And the imperative truth of this uh, metaphor is the command from Paul, do not boast, Roman Gentiles, do not boast in your salvation like uh, the Jews did prior. Don't think that you're privileged now and don't look down on the Jews that have not turned to Christ yet. So you have no reason to boast because all righteousness is due to Jesus Christ, not of your own. So the imperative is do not be prideful. Do not be dismissive of others. Do not look down on others. Do not boast in your acceptance in the kingdom. And then we have the, uh, the conclusion of 11.20 that says that only those who have a faith of reverence will be grafted back in. I mean, the word in English is translated fear, but it means reverence. Only those who have a faith of reverence toward Christ will be grafted back into the new covenant. The intentionality of God is that even more might be brought to faith. And that's why Paul says, don't boast, don't look down on the Jews that have not turned to Christ yet, because the Lord always desires to gather more and more into the new covenant, the renewal of covenant. Don't push away any. So negate all pride, negate all boasting against others. So we end up with a triad of, uh, number one, unbelieving. The broken off branches of the olive tree are the unbelieving Israel. Two, God's covenant faithfulness was given to the patriarchs, and that promise will be fulfilled because of the faithfulness of God and the righteousness of God. Therefore, a remnant can be redeemed if they believe and take up a confession of Christ and live in the Messiah. And be, that way they become the first fruits of the spiritual Israel. And for Paul, God's intent is that even more will come to faith. Therefore, do not become prideful toward any other person's period. Do not become arrogant. Do not think that you are privileged. Do not think that you are better because those you're looking down on are those that Christ desires to draw into his kingdom. The Lord desires to gather more and more and more into his kingdom. Don't look down on anyone, and especially though you were looked down on prior by Pharisees and Sadducees, don't end up becoming that which you hated before. Don't turn yourself into that same type of a person. Don't you become arrogant. Don't you become prideful. Don't ever push anybody away because Christ desires to draw all into his kingdom. He desires to draw all into his kingdom. So the uh, eschatological life, according to the law of faith, for Paul in Romans 11.25, the Musterion mystery of the new covenant is that the Israel of promise is a single family, says Paul, rooted in the patriarchs, and in God's faithfulness, where some branches have been broken off and other branches have been grafted in. But it still is the original single family of covenant faith. It's a renewed covenant, but it is the same single family that's being gathered together in a covenant relationship with the living Lord God. So Paul reiterates don't look down on anybody because it's the same single family that began with the promises to Abraham. Do not look down on anyone because the process of gathering unto salvation, the process of gathering unto Christ is ongoing because the Spirit is still trying to draw people into the covenant relationship through Christ. More shall be turned. Now block two, we're going to take a look at the mystery of the olive tree. Romans 11, 16, 24 is a Metaphor borrowed from Jeremiah 11. Jeremiah saw the curses of Deuteronomy falling on Israel in their elongated exile. Israel had been uh, intended as a green olive tree that would bear fruit and would become a light to the nations. However, they failed in that vocation and they did suffer an elongated exile. Paul got this from Jeremiah 
as a Pharisee, he would have been very familiar with Jeremiah and that uh, the fact that Jeremiah did take up the prophecy in Deuteronomy and he did see it as applied to the disbelieving Israel. And that's why they are suffering an elongated exile under Roman oppression. And Paul took that up and made that part of his reworked eschatology for Israel. But Paul did carry it forward through the lens of Jesus Christ. And we've got three steps here. You've got uh, Israel's disobedience has been used by God to open up salvation of the Gentiles. Paul sees God's faithfulness winning out over any disobedience. The intended purpose from the very beginning was that uh, God intended to include all nations in his plan of salvation. And then third, there is the petition and the exhortation of continuing repentance. God demands continuing repentance and living according to the law of faith, as the way Paul put it. We need to live according to the law of faith and recognizing that the olive tree is still Israel's single tree. Do not exalt yourself. Pride is the enemy here. Negate arrogance. Negate pride. That's always the problem. Negate any prideful attitude. Don't separate yourselves out. Don't push people away. Don't become those who fail the same way that Israel failed in their vocation. Don't let that happen to you Roman Gentiles. Don't let that happen. Because it is a, a life in Christ that demands ongoing repentance, ongoing living according to the law of faith and not the law of Sark's flesh. Live according to the law of faith, says Paul. So it's a very powerful lesson directed specifically to the remnant of Israel. It's all about Paul's additional ministry. He was the apostle to the, to the Gentiles, but in this lesson we learn he was also the apostle to the remnant of Israel. We do have a recall triad coming up next, which will help to consolidate this teaching.